What is going on, Lucid fans? Welcome back to Financial Journey. Today, I want to talk to you more so on air touring. That is now officially being produced and going to be having deliveries very soon. I want to talk about what that means for us as investors. Outside of that, Morgan Stanley just came out saying that they are very bullish on the broader market. So might be a little bit more mixed, so I want to go over that with you. And when it comes down to our upcoming Q3 earnings on November the 8th, I want to go over some potential questions that might be asked to the manager. Management team. So I'm going to go over all that fun stuff. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up and subscribe is always greatly appreciated. With that, let's get right to it. So as you can see, this was posted on the Lucid Owners form and it was basically the email that came out saying that the air touring is now being in production and things like that, but it is only for a certain configuration. Some individuals not necessarily big fans of that, so I just want to share that with you. So it does look like the most common configuration is going to be including the platinum look Look, glass canopy Santa Cruz or Tahoe interior theme dream drive pro that's one attribute some people not necessarily are big fans of the fact that you have to have dream drive pro which ultimately if you guys do not know as far as the price point it's an additional 12,000 for Canadian buyers and 9,000 for Americans uh, so definitely uh, some individuals not necessarily so happy about that but in the grand scheme of things it is what it is and uh, definitely good for us as investors going to show that the air tourings are out there and hitting the street the way I see all of this is the more vehicles that we get out the more people will start to talk about lucid more and more and I absolutely still despite it doesn't matter from October of last year to now I absolutely love seeing pictures on Twitter people posting just different scenes when they just randomly see a lucid and it's very exciting when someone sees a lucid for the first time and you can see it and sense it based on their tweets I absolutely love it so let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below but like I said should have a little bit more additional revenue possibly coming our way as well I don't know if it's too late in the game for customers who want their air touring right now possibly to just add the dream drive pro if that was maybe one of the factors that they didn't get but still i don't know keep in mind though i'm not a financial advisor do your own due diligence at the end of the day there's a couple of things i do want to share with you one of which is morgan stanley on how they are very bullish on the broader market despite a little bit more uh, bad earnings on some cases and keep in mind this week we do have a lot of big tech companies all coming out with their earnings more specifically also apple is coming out i believe it is on thursday but still you guys get what i'm saying a lot of big volatility could be coming our way even more so google did unfortunately miss on some aspects of their earnings as well so definitely going to be a little bit more volatile time but morgan stanley does talk on more so the broader technicals of the s p 500 outside of that they talk on the actual interest rates if hypothetically it is in line with the forecast of what is going to be around the 75 basis points and then after that a lot of rumors about that being the only interest rate hike possibly which is going to come on november the 2nd they do anticipate a broad market rally based on that so it's interesting to see morgan stanley on a little bit more of a bullish side again they might be behind the scenes on shorting things i don't know morgan stanley in my my opinion can't be trusted but who am I to judge still um, but if you do coincide that you always have to think long term so Morgan Stanley is out there saying very much bullish things about the broader market and then there is this so a little bit more uncertainty about the broader market post elections so it does look like uh, a lot of governments were using the emergency reserves for oil possibly purposefully to bring down the price of oil which again gives a lot of equities a nice little rally because of that so again it's one of those things what happens after the election so this is exactly what the question is so what happens after the election so in theory if oil prices go up that might be a little bit more of a backwards way beneficial for evs because i know at that time there was a lot of running rampant a lot of oil prices were going up interest rate talks inflation talks there was just a lot of bad negative time for the broader market but everyone was talking about how demand for evs is just going to skyrocket so potentially that might be a beneficial aspect coming in the future for us as lucid investors so let me know your thoughts on that but again it's a little bit more backwards equities in theory did go down just the demand for evs kind of maintained the price point for lucid so interesting time period nonetheless that we are in but when it comes to that though we do have our upcoming earnings that is set for november the 8th 
8th. I am going to be live streaming that, so make sure you guys subscribe and hit that thumbs up and always that fun stuff. But as I've always said on a lot of live streams, a lot of videos, even the last three, four quarters that we've had uh, over the last little bit, all very much bad questions that were always asked. And they typically do ask the top three questions, give or take, except for when it came down to the Q2 earnings, Clearly, management felt bad for us that they asked four questions because probably they even said, why the hell are we even answering this stupid question? So at the end of the day, I just want to get across to you guys that it is very important that we ask very good questions. And after reading some of this, it's actually it looks like we're moving in the right direction. So the very top question is, when are you planning to start building and utilizing the railroad transportation in Casa Grande factory? I did a whole video on this. I actually did a lot of due diligence and read up on every single aspect. So if someone was wanting to ship a vehicle to Europe from the Casa Grande location or facility, I should say, it would cost them roughly about $1,200 to $1,400. Very, very cheap. But that is being shipped through the UP all the way to Houston, I believe. And from there, they would just boat it to Europe. But unfortunately, based on everything, Lucid hasn't necessarily been doing that. They're really reliant on the old school, just transportation trucks and the semi-trailers and whatever it is. Those are very, very costly. And based on the latest CPI data, I believe it went up 1.4% just month over month. So definitely Lucid could save a lot of money by utilizing that railroad. So 100% agree with this question. So make sure you guys pop over and actually vote for a lot of these questions because if you guys don't vote same thing as an election or whatever it is then you might not actually get the answers or the questions you actually deep down really want to know so it's one of those things just make sure you guys do your own due diligence second question right here is what is the current development progress of the current carplay version is it still planned to be released end of year and are you still planning on partnering with apple to add their upcoming fully integrated carplay in the next year that is a very good question as well. I really do like that. And I think right now, a lot of people don't necessarily like the CarPlay. I did a video on that exact same thing as well. And I got a lot of comments saying that Lucid doesn't need the CarPlay or whatever it might be. So definitely a little bit more mixed on that, but I personally really like that question. Does Lucid use any warehouse or storage facility other than Lucid Amp One to store cars or missing parts or quality issues? Again, another very good question, as clearly a lot of people have come to the conclusion based on what they've provided for Q3 numbers, the number of actual produced versus even what is delivered, I believe is around 1100 vehicles. And that's even more so rolling over from the Q2 as well, just the discrepancy there. Where is this 1100 vehicles? Bears Workshops is doing a phenomenal job for the flyovers, but there's not 1200 vehicles there, give or take. So very interested to see this question asked and keep in mind, they do answer the top three questions. That's what they always hypothetically say, with the exception of, like I said, what happened in Q2. Clearly, they felt bad for us that we asked a very stupid question. So they asked a fourth question, but still, I don't anticipate them going any further. But just for argument's sake, looks like there's around 1,000 cars that have been produced. Okay, so I haven't actually read this one yet, but that does coincide with that. So maybe they won't really ask that. And do you guys plan on making cheaper cars like Tesla in the future? So I think this question, again, is one of those things that even though it does have a huge amount of votes, doesn't necessarily have the huge amount of shares represented. But I think this is a very bad question, plain and simple. We need to get our production down pat for these actual vehicles that is right here. So the Air Touring, Grand touring uh, obviously is sapphire sapphire is actually one aspect that would be very interesting hopefully in the q3 earnings they let us know how many reservations came from that so i think that might be a very positive thing that we do come from that might be a very valid question as well that we do ask then obviously dream not dream edition but more so the peer so i think we need to focus a little bit more on that getting those products out before we start talking on a lower price vehicle but when it comes to it that though i just wanted to share this with you as i said in a lot of live streams i wanted to kind of stress to you guys the importance of this opportunity that we do have that we can ask very valid questions so let me know your thoughts on that or possibly let me know your thoughts on a potential better question other than these three that i did uh, kind of touch on as well also on a side note let me know your thoughts on morgan stanley like i said morgan stanley even when it comes down to lucid they keep reiterating that 12 dollars price target they recently said that we are getting our 12 dollars price target because of the broader economy 
not necessarily because of anything else. So very interesting to see how they are a little bit more bullish on the broader market, bearish on Lucid. It just goes to show, cannot always trust what institutions and what big money is saying. Do your guys' own due diligence, plain and simple at the end. But with all that, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe is always greatly appreciated. If you do like my channel, want to support the growth, take a look at my memberships, link in the description below, or just hit the join button at the bottom of the screen. With that, appreciate you guys watching. Let's all make a lot of money on Lucid.